Hi everyone. Um, this is the first episode of a series of basis approaches for Station 2 and Station 5. Um, we'll be beginning with neurology approaches and for these approaches I've broken them up into two presentations. So today we'll be talking about headaches, giddiness, loss of consciousness, weakness and lethargy. So for headaches, um, most of us are familiar since medical school that headaches, by and large, we think of it in terms of primary versus secondary headaches. For primary, we have migraine, tension, and cluster headaches. And for secondary headaches, we can think of it in terms of intracranial pathologies as well as extracranial uh, and systemic pathologies. For headaches, it is very important uh, for one to be able to uh, recognize uh, red flags. Uh, and next up would be the patterns of headaches. So what I mean by patterns would be uh, headaches with, say, raised ICP features or headaches that are thunderclap in nature, headaches associated with visual disturbances and headaches with hypertension. Uh, the reason why patterns are important is because then uh, one can home in quite quickly on a narrowed list of differentials uh, when these patterns are present. Uh, in terms of the extracranial group, it is important to remember systemic pathologies such as in the faces context, uh, pheochromocytoma, obstructive sleep apnea, hyperviscosity uh, that can cause headaches as well. So this is a fairly busy slide. Um, for the primary headaches, it's important to know the characteristic uh, features, such as in migraine, uh, they tend to prefer dark places, they may be associated with auras or cluster, uh, there can be um, autonomic symptoms such as eye tearing. But before that, I think uh, it is important to evaluate, number one, uh, for any red flags, uh, and number two, um, whether or not there are any other secondary causes so red flags wise, I think of it in terms of number one, the characteristics of the headache. So whether it's thunderclap, whether it's progressive in nature, whether there are raised ICP features. Number two, whether or not there are associated neurological symptoms. Number three, uh, whether there is associated meningism. Uh, number four, whether there are other constitutional features like fever, loss of weight, loss of appetite. And in terms of patient demographic wise, in the extremities of age, it is important to consider uh, pathologies such as neoplasms uh, because they don't typically uh, get primary uh, headaches uh, having the onset in those age ranges. Um, in terms of the intracranial, there are different ways of uh, classifying them. So you can look through the differentials here. Uh, I'd like to point out a few uh, important conditions in the next slide. Um, so important conditions to think about in the PACERS exam, especially for station 5, would be for primary neurological disorder, cerebrovenous sinus thrombosis in the context of a hypercoagulable state. So this could include um, antiphospholipid syndrome or some form of hyperviscosity in the context of a hematological malignancy would be, con uh, would be conditions uh, to think about. Uh, benign intracranial hypertension can have features of raised ICP and SAH in the context of adult polycystic kidney disease is something to think about as well. Uh, for endocrine pathologies, uh, pituitary apoplexy, pheochromocytoma and acromegaly are conditions to consider. Uh, GCA is an important cause of headache in the appropriate uh, epidemiological context is an important differential to consider. And uh, obstructive sleep apnea is also a common cause uh, of headache. So for OSA, you may want to think of conditions such as uh, hypothyroidism uh, that could be a secondary cause of OSA. So this is uh, the bit about patterns that I mentioned earlier. So if a patient has headache with associated hypertension, you may want to think of endocrinopathy such as uh, pheochromocytoma, uh, acromegaly, Cushing's. Um, they could have hypertension causing headache uh, in extremities of blood pressure. That could be possible, um, although um, some might argue that hypertension itself doesn't uh, really cause a headache. Um, calcium channel blocker use in the context of treatment for hypertension can be a cause of headache too. Uh, raised ICP with Cushing's reflex um, could be another explanation uh, and pituitary tumors as mentioned earlier. If there's blurring of vision, there are a few things to consider. GCA is an important, important cause to consider. Other intracranial problems would be uh, things like BIH, uh, we can cause visual disturbances to any space occupying uh, lesion uh, that may either compromise the uh, 
the, the optic chiasma or any other areas of the, the visual field axis uh, can cause visual problems as well. Uh, glaucoma is an extracranial cause of headache um, and you would normally have other associated features such as a red eye and doesn't tend to come out that commonly in places. So a thunderclap headache is important. Uh, we normally know uh, SAH as a, as a key differential, but I think the other two important ones to think about in the PACES context would be uh, cerebral venous sinus thrombosis and any cervical uh, artery dissection. Um, so the former, uh, as mentioned, can occur in hypercoagulable states. The latter can occur in connective tissue disorders. Uh, RCVS is not very common, so that's just uh, included for completeness sake. Uh, features of raised ICP, um, think SOL, think um, benign intracranial hypertension, think thrombosis and hemorrhage. Next, we move on to giddiness. So giddiness, the three big groups uh, I think about are whether it's a vertiginous giddiness, a pre-syncope kind of picture, or whether it's just general lightheadedness uh, that is not very well characterized. In terms of vertiginous, I think about it of whether it's central or whether it's peripheral. If it's central, we think of uh, cerebellar uh, problems, and if it's peripheral, we think of more um, ENT problems. So for the peripheral group, you will want to hunt for any other associated uh, ENT symptoms such as tinnitus, any ear fullness, ear pain, ear discharge. And for central causes, uh, it's important to look for any other neurological uh, symptoms. Um, for pre syncope, we'll go through uh, the big groups later, but uh, they would include um, number one, uh, postural uh, hypotension, number two, uh, cardiogenic, number three, uh, neurogenic and number four, vascular slash uh, steel syndromes. And for lightheadedness, this is quite a non-specific group, can be due to things like hypoglycemia, electrolyte disturbances, uh, etc. But they, um, the, the last group is normally not that common. Um, so I would say in the, especially for the PACES station five context, uh, we do tend to see a fair amount of pre-syncope uh, group uh, where they come in with like postural giddiness. And the big group to think about would be um, 2Ds and 3A. So DM, uh, drugs, autonomic dysfunction that can happen in um, all kinds of neurological disorders, adrenal insufficiency and anemia too. Other conditions to think about, uh, don't forget that cardiogenic presyncope uh, can also cause um, giddiness. So angspon, uh, the metal myositis, polymyositis, myotonic dystrophy can cause conduction defects. Um, rare, uh, but maybe to just keep at the back of the mind would be uh, NF2 can be associated with acoustic neuromas that can uh, potentially cause uh, a peripheral vertigo. And uh, hypoglycemia in the context of adrenal insufficiency and MEN1 can cause uh, lightheadedness. Uh, so once again, uh, this is a, a slide that contains the different uh, differentials. So for vertiginous, uh, as mentioned earlier, uh, the, these are the big groups for the pre-syncope group. So cardiac, vascular, neuro, and uh, orthostatic or postural hypotension group, and lightheadedness, as uh, mentioned. So spend some time looking through the differentials. So next we talk about uh, loss of consciousness. Uh, it overlaps a little bit with the giddiness, especially when it comes to the syncope group. Um, so the three big groups would be, number one, seizures. So for seizures, it's important in the PACES station five context to think about neurocutaneous uh, disorders. Syncope, as mentioned and described in the um, pre-syncope group, and uh, others. So others would include things like drop attacks, uh, patients who have fallen asleep, uh, and, and that could, could be perceived as a loss of consciousness. Uh, or drowsiness. Um, in the context of uh, seizures or cardiogenic syncope, it's important to consider counseling regarding uh, high-risk activity and driving. Okay, so uh, once again, we look at a big category. So seizures-wise, of course, we go through the history to try to identify seizures. Uh, it's important to think about the uh, neurocutaneous uh, syndrome, such as sturge webers tuberous sclerosis, and Down syndrome. So if the stem is that of a seizure or loss of consciousness, when you step into the examination room, it's important to inspect the patient to see whether or not there are any suggestive features. Um, in terms of the acute triggers, uh, I mean, the, the causes are, are multiple. You can go through and it's probably not exhaustive. Um, 
in terms of syncope wise, so the cardiogenic group we have mentioned, um, I can't emphasize further to, to remember conditions such as myotonic dystrophy, uh, other forms of dystrophy such as uh, Duchenne's, Becker's muscular dystrophy, uh, which can cause conduction problems because of the cardiomyopathy. Uh, ankylosing spondylitis also uh, is known to cause uh, AV block, so that can also manifest as, uh, as a cardiogenic syncope. Um, it could also be a case uh, with, uh, with a valve problem, uh, so a patient with uh, aortic stenosis or hokum, structural heart problems, uh, but that is probably a bit less likely in the station 5 context. Uh, the postural hypotension causes have been mentioned. Don't forget adrenal insufficiency. Um, and yeah, uh, steel syndrome. So steel syndrome is something that is important also if patients' symptoms are associated with upper limb activities such as movement of the arms, uh, you might want to think of conditions such as Takayasu, uh, where vasculitis can uh, contribute to steel syndrome or some form of previous uh, cardiac surgery with uh, BT shunt in situ. Um, the drowsiness group uh, and the others group is just kept in there for um, completeness. Um, I did get a practice case of someone falling asleep and that was perceived as loss of consciousness and the patient had background OSA. So it might be something you want to think about. Okay, then we move on to this uh, very dreaded group of uh, weakness or lethargy. So I think, I think the first thing that's important is to ascertain whether this is true weakness or whether it's more generalized lethargy, malaise, tiredness. Um, if it is true weakness, then um, I would think of it in terms of Number one, the onset, whether it's persistent or episodic. Number two, the pattern. So distribution-wise, is it um, a hemiparesis? Is it a tetraparesis? Is it one limb that's involved? Number two, whether or not there are any bulbar symptoms. And then whether it's uh, proximal versus distal, because that would narrow down your etiological differentials. And then you look for any other neurological symptoms, such as sensory symptoms, cranial nerve deficits, extrapyramidal, cerebellar, and autonomic dysfunction. For the lethargy, malaise, and fatigue group, um, the truth of the matter is that it can, it can be anything under the sun. But in the paces, especially station five and even station two context, um, you might want to think uh, of these differentials uh, high up on your differential list, such as endocrinopathy. So hypothyroidism, adrenal insufficiency are notorious to cause um, such uh, malaise, lethargy, panhypopit, um, be it uh, iatrogenic from previous surgery or due to uh, a new tumor will be something to consider. Obstructive sleep apnea is important. Uh, anemia and any form of systemic diseases. Don't forget things like drugs too. So beta blockers are also notorious to cause uh, lethargy and malaise. If there are associated muscle pains, you might want to think of uh, myositis. So the metal myositis, statin-induced myositis, uh, polymyalgia rheumatica in the context of um, GCA features or fibromyalgia uh, in the context of muscle pains. Um, so these are, so I've broken up into fatigue lethargy with the differentials mentioned there. And in terms of it, if it is a true neurological weakness, then it would be to go back to your, uh, your, your lo neural localization axis. Uh, you won't be able to tell necessarily whether it's an upper or lower motor neuron problem, uh, but at least from the distribution, uh, it would give you a clue. But I would say apart from distribution, also consider onset, because if it is uh, acute, you want to think of vascular causes. Uh, if it is uh, more subacute, you may want to think of things like infections, uh, inflammatory diseases. And if it's more chronic, you may want to think of things like uh, neoplasm, degenerative congenital disorders. Um, so maybe just to highlight some of the things that do come out quite frequently. Um, if it's episodic in particular, think of hypokalemic periodic paralysis uh, that may or may not be associated uh, with uh, thyroid disorders. Um, differentials for um, periodic paralysis will include that of uh, hemiplegic migraines, TIAs, uh, hypoglycemia. So we've come to the end of uh, this session. I hope you found it useful.